everyone, welcome back to another video on Mountain of Sports Talk. We're here in week 12 of the NFL, and I'm going to be doing my power rankings of teams 1 through 16, like usual. And let's get started right away with the number one team this week. So my number one team for this week is still the Kansas City Chiefs, the defending Super Bowl champions. And you can take a look at the 15 team, the Miami Dolphins. But let's get right into the Chiefs' performance this week against the Oakland Raiders. A 35 to 31 win in a thriller on Sunday night. The Chiefs are my number one team. Mahomes had another great and absolutely dominant performance. Although he had one interception, he was still exceptionally great with over 300 yards passing, two touchdowns, and although the Raiders were able to chew much clock, Mahomes made great use of his possessions, scoring 35 points and five touchdowns. So very impressive there for Mahomes, and the Chiefs just continue to roll on. Although the Raiders, you know, they have been playing really well. I'll give them credit for that. And they also give the Chiefs quite a bit of problems on the defensive end. The Raiders' defense was, I mean, the Chiefs' defense was just really bad. Honestly, they kept allowing Derek Carr to go all the way down the field. And um, Derek Carr was really good, but the Chiefs' defense has to improve. And um, I think the Chiefs' defense will improve like they did last year. Down the stretch, the Chiefs' defense was able to... Um, really lock up and I think they can do the same this year with their high-powered offense with Mahomes and Terry Kill and uh, Kelsey you know pretty dominating again in Las Vegas beating the Raiders 35 to 31 rightful number one team and let's move on to number two four seconds left second and seven here's Mahomes deep drop clean pocket throws over the middle wide open Kelsey touchdown Kansas City as the Chiefs have taken the lead, Mahomes, magic. Kelsey wide open as the Raiders. Blow coverage as Kelsey is just wide open here. Mahomes doing it again in the clutch as Carr throws intercepted by Sorensen, and that will be it. KC moves on, able to revenge against the Raiders. Number two, still the Pittsburgh Steelers. Another dominating win over Jacksonville. They're now 10 and 0. And I actually have a possibility to go 16-0 and undefeated. And uh, you can take a look at 16. Those are the Vikings that had a heartbreaking loss against the Cowboys, surprisingly. But the Steelers, you know, they continue to roll on. They'll play Baltimore on Thanksgiving night. Should be a win for them. And they just keep rolling offensively. I think Big Ben needs to be put in the MVP conversation. And... Uh, their defense is one of the best, as always. And the reason the Steelers are not number one is because I still think the Chiefs will beat them. Um, because Simply because of my homeboy. It's all because of my homeboy. And there's no other reason to put it that way. But the Steelers are really good. They are very, very good. Their wide receivers are really excellent. Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, you know, James Washington, Chase Claypool. They're all really great. And they have a great offensive line, obviously to me the best defense so you know they're gonna take it really deep this year we'll see if they can actually get it go to the super bowl number three this week still the same the new orleans saints so the saints this week continue to find ways to win this time with Taysom hill you know a really surprising start we thought Jameis winston would be the one who would be starting this week but the surprise for Taysom hill and it did turn out really great for the saints he had 250 yards passing plus Two rushing touchdowns, which doesn't happen to Drew Brees. You get that extra option, you know, of running the ball. And I think that's really what Sean Payton was looking forward to. And Taysom Hill did not disappoint. He had a really great game. And, you know, the Saints, they're a very versatile team. Continue to find ways to win, especially with Taysom Hill. And you always know about Alvin Kamara. He didn't really have that big of a game. But still, um, Michael Thomas was heavily involved this week. And the Saints are just looking really, really strong. You know, they're on an eight-game win streak, um, seven-game win streak, never mind. But, you know, they keep rolling and rolling on, and their defense has steadily improved each week. So the Saints are looking like the most balanced team in the NFC, and according to me, the best team in the NFC. I know the Packers lost, and people are really moving the Colts up, but honestly, I still think the Packers are good. They're pretty good offensively. I know they kind of didn't do too good. But, you know, against the Colts, really good defense. I was surprised they put up, you know, 31 points. And they won the toss in overtime. And I think, I just think they were about to win. But, you know, the Colts forced a turnover. 
good for them. But, you know, uh, the Packers would have won that game, I think, if they didn't do that. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to overreact. You know, I'm still, I still like the Packers. I think they're a really good team. One of the best in the NFC. Offensively, they're one of the best, you know. You got to f realize that. And not get overreacting to just this loss um, against the Colts. But I still think the Packers are good. And with Aaron Rodgers, you have to keep trusting in him. And you know he'll deliver because he's is just one of the greatest ever. So, uh, I'm not overreacting. I still think the Packers are good. Um... I still think they're one of the top teams, especially offensively, with a powerful offense. Defensively, they're not too good, but uh, I, I'm still keeping them at four, unless they lose a couple of more games. My number five team, they're still the Buffalo Bills. I really like the Bills. To me, they have, still have a pretty strong defense, and offensively, Josh Allen's an MVP. They had a bye this week, so not really going to go over them because they didn't play. At number six, the LA Rams. They've moved up a lot in my power rankings. To me, they're a very, very solid team. A team that can really win in the playoffs. They have the best, I think, passing defense and um, really stingy defense. And defense wins your championships. They are really strong defensively and make big plays and force turnovers, you know? Um, I just like the Rams this year. Offensively, they're really putting it together week by week. Although they've had a couple of bad performances here and there. They've really gotten it together. Jared Goff is looking pretty good. And the Sean McVay offense is rolling with their um, running back by committee. But Jalen Ramsey has been a lockdown, honestly. Um, but Jared Goff, you know, has been pretty good, although he's had a couple of turnovers. His offense is looking great. If, if you saw on Monday night, both Cooper Cup and Robert Woods played extremely well. Both had over 100 yards receiving and 10 receptions. One of the few times in Monday night history. And uh, the Rams look pretty good, I think, offensively. Uh, and look out for them later on. They might win the NFC West, you know, uh, with their strong defense and, you know, an offense that's really coming together. So you need to watch out for them, especially if, you know, Jared Goff can keep it going. And they didn't even have their run game going this week. You know, against the Buccaneers, you can't run. So you have to pass against the Buccaneers because they're terrible defending the pass. And that's what the Rams did. You know, they can really run the ball, and when they do play action, it becomes very lethal. So, you know, when they run the ball with Henderson and Malcolm Brown or Cam Akers, they will be even better. So you need to look out for the Rams. So number seven, I've got the Seattle Seahawks. They move up after defeating the Cardinals on a great Thursday night game. So the Seahawks looking good on Thursday night. Russell Wilson didn't really have one of his games where he was cooking, but, you know, he was still pretty good making some good recipes in his kitchen. But, uh, you know, they played really well. They were able to beat the Cardinals in a really important game, very important on Thursday night. Divisional rivalry, able to take control, you know. Um, and Russell Wilson did enough. They were able to run the ball a little bit more. Defensively, they've been improving each week. So you really need to look out for that defense. That's one of the main reasons I increased um, their ranking because their defense has been slowly improving as you see a touchdown by DK Metcalf um he's been an absolute monster their true number one so uh it's been pretty impressive for a season for him and defensively they're able to lock down a really powerful offense of the Cardinals probably because of Murray getting injured but you know they're able to do a better job and that's really improving because you can't rely on Russell Wilson every week you can't do that it's just too much task for, for any quarterback so it's impressive to see that the Seahawks are getting a little bit better defensively and um, offensively they've been, you know, trying to maybe not less Russ, Russ cook too much, you know, make it a little bit more evenly spread offensively. And they will, I think, be a solid playoff team. Number seven, I've got the Arizona Cardinals. They moved down after kind of like a lackluster performance offensively. We were expecting a lot more. Maybe because of Kyler getting injured, it might have infected that a little bit. But I, I still like the Cardinals. I think there's some kind of magic about them, honestly. You know, I think they're a special team. So I'm still keeping them up there. Uh, and they may be able to rebound. I think they should be able to rebound, actually, after. And they'll, because they're playing the Patriots. So look for their offense to rebound. Defensively, they're not really too good or too great. 
you know, they're not really terrible, but they're not good. So I don't know really what to expect from the defense. But their offense is just really good, and they weren't able to put up a really great performance on Thursday night. I think they'll rebound. Um, I still think they're special, and I'm still believing in them, you know. And Kyler, to me, is, is dropped down a little bit in the MVP race, but, um, you know, I still think they'll definitely make the playoffs. And if they get on a roll, you need to watch out because they'll be uh, pretty dangerous then. So I, I still think highly of the Cardinals a little bit. You know, their offense is really, really talented, and we'll see how they fare. So number nine, I have the Indianapolis Colts. They've been consistently moving up in my ranking. Colts, I know a lot of people have really, really moved them up, but I'm still waiting on them. I know they're a really good team. Their defense is one of the best, and offensively, they've looked great these past few weeks, but I'm still waiting. I still feel like those other teams are still better than them. You know, Phillip Rivers has, a, has been having good, good games, and when he has good games, the Colts generally win, but the problem is he throws a lot of interceptions, and we'll have to see how that clears out whether the Colts can be consistently good on the offensive side. Defensively, we know what they bring. Very uh, talented and very, um, you know, skillful defense. Very, very um, um, consistent. And they, they are very, you know, clear in what they want to do. And they like to be di very disciplined. So the Colts' defense is very good. And offensively, they've been pretty good as well. So... I'm still waiting, you know, they beat in some good teams like the Titans, like the Packers, but can this offense consistently produce like this is what I'm looking for. Number 10, we got those Titans. Tennessee Titans, who had an amazing victory in overtime against the Ravens. The Titans, a huge win over the Ravens, once again beating that team in Baltimore in astonishing fashion with Derrick Henry doing his thing, once again running all over these Ravens. Um, including the game-winning overtime run which sealed the deal pretty much which it actually did in real life as you see a nice oh as if you can see a pass interference there on the Ravens um, so the Titans are looking good after a couple of losses they've come back and played pretty well in this game against the Ravens I think they're a very strong playoff team uh, that can win a lot of games in the playoffs because of Derrick Henry and we all know that, just like last year. So the Titans are looking up, you know, their defense needs to improve. They did pretty well against Lamar Jackson and offensively Tannehill was really good. AJ Brown, outstanding. And of course, Derrick Henry. So you need to watch out for the Titans. They are a pretty dangerous team sometimes. So, and they have, they make some big upsets every week. You know, a lot of people pick the Ravens. I picked the Titans, I trusted them. And they did it. So, the way well coached him, you know, it's becoming a fierce rivalry almost now. So, anyway, the Titans are looking up. Here are the Titans, first and 10. Here in overtime, 20 yard line. Here goes Henry, finds a way. There he goes. He's going to win the game. Derrick Henry. And the Titans win it in overtime, beating the Ravens once again. Derrick Henry hits the walk off touchdown in dramatic fashion. Henry powering his way through the Ravens defense that is looking oh so tired. King Henry has been crowned once again. 11 are the Buccaneers who just have been going down um, because they lost to the Rams. Um, they're just not looking too good. So the Buccaneers, you know, they're just not really playing that well, honestly. They're had, they have such a good team, but it's just not looking good for them. Offensively, they're not in sync at all. You know, they've had a couple of bright spots here and there, but they're just not consistent enough at all. Tom Brady has not been looking too great this year. He's played well against the bad teams, but in prime time against the good teams, not so well, you know. And defensively, they can stop the run, but they can't stop the pass, and that's why teams pass all over them. Jared Goff had a great game. Woods, Cup, they all dominated because the Bucks' defense could not stop the pass. And... I mean, they can stop the run, pretty good pass rush, you know. They're generally a really good team. As you see, Mike Evans carry like 20 billion people into the end zone. <laughs> he was showing so much effort there. That's what he loved about Mike Evans, you know. But anyway, um, the Buccaneers, you know, 
they have to be more consistent. They have to show up, you know, against the good teams. And guess what? They're playing those Chiefs next. So we need to watch out and step it up. Brady, you know, at this time definitely needs to do it. It's getting to December, so he needs to get into his levels, which he always normally does. And, you know, he just needs to take care of the ball, not throw any interceptions. It needs to be good. And their offense, you know, they have a lot of talent. It just hasn't been working out as well this year. And who knows, if they get on a roll, they'll be dangerous. Two men are going to use Brady on second and ten. Steps up over the middle. Overthrown, intercepted by Fuller. And that should do it. As the Rams win this 27-24. to As a Brady throws a pick. And the Buccaneers lose. So at number 12, we got the Raiders. I've already talked about them with the Chiefs. You know, Derek Carr has been playing extremely well. And um, they're really looking like a solid playoff team. Josh Jacobs is really being good. Aguilar has been very impressive, actually. And, um, you know, Darren Waller has emerged as one of the best tight ends. I think they have a really good shot of being good, you know. look for, Looking forward to the Raiders as a team. And defensively, they have a young defense, which is just getting better. 13, we have the Baltimore Ravens. We have just gone down on a landslide after putting up not too great performances the past couple of weeks. Ravens, you know, it's just been pretty tough for them, having not looking too good these past <coughs> weeks, you know, leading up into crunch time, you know. So they really need to get their act together, offensively especially. Defensively, they're a pretty good team. You know, they're one of the best, actually, defensively. Pass defense, run defense, you know, they're pretty good. Offensively, they need a lot of improvement. It all starts with Lamar Jackson, you know. Their pass offense has been one of the worst in the league. And he was saying that, you know, their play calls have been literally been called out by opponents. So, you know, they really need to get more creative in their play calls. And, uh, you know, they also need to develop a stronger passing game. And really, I think they need a number one receiver, a true number one. Lamar doesn't have that type of guy. But even then, their offense, you know, just doesn't perform nearly as well as last year. Not even close compared to last year. Their offense is just not too good. Their running game is good. They just, you can't win without passing the ball these days. You need to have a good passing game to it, and they just aren't doing that. And that's why you see them losing to teams like the Titans and stuff, who are better than them right now. And guess what? They're playing the Steelers, so it's a rivalry game. They may get it together then on Thanksgiving, but, you know, they're going to have to pull off a couple here if they want to get their momentum back. And Lamar just really has to play better. He needs to throw well for the, for the Ravens to do good. Next up, we have the Cleveland Browns, who had a nice win over the Eagles. The defense got a pick six, and they had a strong running game, which has been their strength throughout. So the Browns, you know, they've been playing pretty well. They're now 7-3. and three. This is like the best they've been in a really long time. So it's really strange to see the Browns play really well. You know, you know, these past couple of games, it's been pretty bad weather in Cleveland. So they've been able to pound it in, you know, um, and that's how they've been winning games. And that's how they will win games by pounding the rock with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Um, so yeah, Baker Mayfield needs to be protective of the ball. They've done well defensively. They have a really great pass rush and a great young defense. And they definitely are looking up, you know. Um, unfortunately, Odell got injured, but, you know, what can you do? Miles Garrett eventually will be coming back, so the defense is only going to get better like they were before. And offensively, they're really good at running the ball, so they can be a really good, you know, team down the stretch in these months of winter. And that's how they can get into the playoffs as a wild card. That's right, as you can see, the pick six here um, by Taki Taki, whatever his name is. But um, Carson Wentz is trash, honestly. So um, the Browns, you know, they've been playing really well. So finally, they get to enjoy some wins. Miami Dolphins, they're having their magic run. And then who knows what happened? As you see, an Xavier Howard interception. He has been really good. Xavier Howard, the Miami Dolphins secondary is very good. Their defense has been playing extremely well under Brian Flores as head coach. And uh, the Dolphins are looking up as Tua throws. Right side, Parker makes the catch. Toe tap. Touchdown, Miami. Um, Devontae Parker was really good. Tua 
got benched, unfortunately, at the end. So, you know, the Dolphins' magic run of victories, you know, has ended here as the Broncos got a big upset victory, you know. But the Dolphins, you know, they've been looking up for the Dolphins. Their future's really bright. They may sneak in as a wild, as a wild card. I've been saying that all along. Uh, Tua will be starting next game. Um, offensively, they did not look too good besides that opening drive touchdown to Devontae Parker, who has been pretty good this year. But the Dolphins, you know, they're a young team. They'll be getting it together under the coach of the year. To me, Brian Flores has done exceptionally well job with this team as head coach. So, a the loss there in between for the Dolphins, I expect them to bounce back, you know, offensively especially. So the Vikings had a very shocking loss, you know, to the Cowboys. Everybody thought the Vikings would easily beat the Cowboys, but surprisingly, the Vikings choked <coughs> once again as the Cowboys found a way to win, you know. So the Vikings' defense is just not really good at all. Meanwhile, their offense is pretty good. Kirk Cousins had a really good game, but they couldn't score when they needed to and had some uh, bad turnovers. But Adam Thielen, once again, was really outstanding for the Vikings. And um, Justin Jefferson is really a candidate for the Rookie of the Year. He has been exceptional, you know, as the Vikings number two receiver. He's looking really good. The Vikings, you know, are looking really good offensively, but they just don't score when it really, really matters, which is what really needs to happen as they're been one of the more disappointing teams this year you know so hopefully they can win a couple but it's not looking too good for the playoff hopes right now so that's the end of the video i hope you enjoyed my power rankings for week number 12 go down please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because all your nfl content is right here such as power rankings predictions you know everything you need to know for the nfl is right here so please go down and subscribe all nfl fans so, hope you enjoyed it once again, and um, please go down and comment in the comment section what do you think of my rankings, and also the new setup we got here with this TV here. So, let me know what you guys think of the TV here, whether it helps the setup or not. Uh, just go down and let me know what your thoughts are. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.